嘅人數開會。咁我宣布今日。Good morning. Uh, I can now call the meeting to order. We have got a quorum. This invites the、uh, deputations to join us. Uh, the government officials as well. 啊！再一次。Once again, let me welcome all the deputations and government officials. The deputations are here to offer their views. Please wear the earpiece and select the appropriate channel. Channel zero is floor language. Channel one, Cantonese. Channel two, English. Channel three, Putonghua. I'd like to remind all those in attendance that, apart from legal members and、uh, designated government officials in attendance. Other people attending today's meeting and their submissions will not be covered by the powers and privileges of the Legislative Council Power and Privileges Ordinance. For today's meeting. The deputations will be given five minutes each. When you speak, please don't use mixed code, so as not to make simultaneous interpretations difficult. May I now invite a Miss、uh, Tanya Chen from Civic Party to speak first? Thank you, Chairman. I want to say something about the bill before you. The government would like to move amendments,、uh, the granting and、uh, revocation of the、uh, franchise, and then there is an exit mechanism proposed uh, on uh, a mandatory sale, and also the housekeeping bureau will be、uh, transferred to the Commerce and Economic Development Bureau. I'm、uh, comparing、uh, the existing legislation with the uh, proposed uh, amendments. For example, 2A will be become 2B and 2C in the bill. Another part is the、uh, exit mechanism. In、uh, the existing 2A, 2B. And there, some of the、uh, contents are not in the new 2B and 2C. In 2A1, uh, there's a reference to premium. I would like to know the nature of the of the premium and where can we find this in the bill. It seems that、uh, in the past two years we have seen a big increase in uh, the uh, amount determined. I have figures got the past、uh, with regard to the past eight to ten years, but in the past two years the increase、uh, was quite big because.、Uh, Only the land、uh, besides the tracks、uh, is government land. So how do you determine the premium, and how can people know、uh, what the premium is? And also in two A, it's、uh, also sort of、uh, odd, and、uh, they are required to submit paper on.、Uh, 
technical upgrading so that they can be entitled to uh, a renewal 10 years. Uh, in the new build, there's something similar, but there's no reference to any period, time period. It's a 2B bracket 6. Uh, can you not uh, make reference to section 2 and come up with a re relevant period? And also to 2C1B, I think it's too general. Uh, you can submit whatever information or material you like. So it's uh, going to be very vague for a new entrant to the market. And also to see two packet two packet A in the new build, I can see that if uh, a new operating right is granted for longer than three years, then uh, you have to apply for a new old. Uh, Three, three years before the expiry. I think the government is more uh, in, inclined to, to find an exit mechanism for the current operator than future operators. Now, your legal advisor and your members have asked uh, questions about this. And in the latest one, CB41208, 1415, bracket 02, uh, the government uh, try to answer members' questions concerning the other the, uh, public uh, transport operators and similar arrangements for those operators. If I understand uh, the reply correctly, those are the ordinances uh, governing the operation of these operators um, more in line with the existing ordinance than the new bill. It seems that the government wants to introduce a new operator and provides the new operator with an exit mechanism. I would like the uh, government to explain why uh, there's such a change and what uh, implications there will be for the uh, new uh, operating rights. Mr. Uh, Chen, Mr. Joseph Chen, Liberal Party. Yes, I represent the uh, peak constituency the, in the District Council. We are uh, of the view that uh, the uh, com operator should be given a long uh, period uh, of a franchise so that they can uh, improve the service and the capacity uh, with uh, the uh, number of tourists increased by the twofold over the past few years. Uh, many tourists uh, have to queue up to take the peak tram uh, since it's a very popular tourist uh, facility and because of the uh, long waiting time our image uh, as a tourist city is affected mm -hmm. and uh, many residents on the peak have to take other modes of public transport including the taxi and minibus and the tra traffic congestion uh, is, uh, is become becoming more and more uh, congested. Uh, from what I've heard from uh, those living on the peak, uh, the tra traveling time uh, is now the near an hour instead of just 10 odd minutes. Uh, so we hope that the government can grant uh, a longer period of uh, franchise uh, to the uh, operator so that they can uh, improve their capacity and uh, and and then provide a better service. Uh, and then I would like to turn to uh, protection of the environment of the peak. According to the operator, they are going to have the bigger cars and also to have a longer, uh, the longer platform uh, built, and uh, such works will not affect the natural environment, and there will be no need to remove any trees. I hope the tramway company uh, would uh, do the work under the tight supervision of the government to make sure that trees uh, will not be uh, removed or harmed in any way. And also the government uh, has uh, come up with this uh, compulsory leasing arrangement 
But this is very inappropriate. Such uh, a requirement will affect the, uh, leasehold, the leaseholder, the landowner's uh, right to develop his own property. But this is the uh, this uh, is at the very core of our economic foundation. Private uh, property rights must be respected and mustn't be uh, affected mm -hmm. in any way. The government should handle the uh, exit mechanisms uh, with proper reference to that principle. Uh, let's, now let's have uh, Mr. Martin uh, Sawyer. And thank you for inviting us to today's meeting. The Peak Tram was conceived and developed by a few visionary entrepreneurs in the 1880s. This incredible feat of engineering was completed with no financial subsidy from the government and has throughout its 127 years of operation continued to be a wholly private enter enterprise. Since those early days, Peak Tramways Company has invested significantly in the tram and its infrastructure and grown it from a simple mode of transportation to a world-renowned tourism and recreational facility. It has become the most visited tourist attraction in Hong Kong, a Hong Kong icon. We are very proud of our excellent safety record and our reputation for providing a quality service to our passengers due to stringent repair and maintenance programs and investment in staff training and development. The Peak Tram so serves over six million tourists a year and its patronage continues to grow annually. To facilitate this demand, we continually invest in system and equipment improvements. Furthermore, we commissioned the Hong Kong Productivity Council to conduct a comprehensive productivity study and implemented many improvement schemes as a result. <clears throat> the study concluded that the room for productivity improvement of the current operation is very limited unless we increase the tram car capacity due to significant space constraints we face. To enhance our services in the interim, we have implemented a number of initiatives to improve the queuing time and offer more efficient ticket sales at busy times. In November 2012, we applied for a renewal of our operating right and proposed to the government an improvement plan which will significantly enhance the passenger experience by reducing waiting time in a protected environment and providing greater capacity for the long-term growth of the peak tram. The improvement plan, which has been developed by a team of professional consultants, entails a significant investment in the region of 600 million Hong Kong dollars and will require a 20-year operating right to justify the investment. Peak Tramways continues in our wish to be granted the right to run and operate the tramway for a period of at least another 20 years. If the bill is passed in its present form, we intend to apply to the government for the grant of the operating right for an initial period of 10 years, commencing on the 1st of January 2016, and once the right is granted, we'll immediately apply for the renewal of such operating right for a further period of 10 years from the 1st of January 2026. We intend to implement the major upgrade plan of the tram and its infrastructure without further delay and expect with government support this to be completed in four to five years. We have expressed to government our objection to any exit arrangements that require the compulsory acquisition of our land or premises, which would be an unjust encroachment on our private rights. However, to ensure that there is no disruption to the tramway service, should there be a change of operator, the company considers a mandatory lease regime as opposed to compulsory acquisition to be a more palatable arrangement. We view the acceptance of the mandatory lease of our essential premises and the mandatory sale of our essential equipment as part of a package including all other terms still to be negotiated with government. The current peak tram operating right expires on the 31st of December 2015. In view of the time constraint, the company believes that in order to ensure that there will be no disruption to the tramway service after the end of 2015, and in the interest of the public, the Legislative Council should, should pursue the amendment legislation as a priority. We are confident that we can create a new 
and improved funicular railway service to the peak based on 127 <coughs> excuse me, years of history and the latest technology that will continue to be one of Hong Kong's most enduring icons. Thank you for your attention and we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Sawyer. Um, Wei Cheng Jing Fu. Who from the government would uh, provide a response? Uh, good morning, Chairman. Uh, let me uh, respond to uh, Ms. Chan and uh, Mr. Sawyer's points. I would like to provide some facts for members' uh, reference. Ms. Chan refers to the uh, premium in the existing ordinance and where has it gone? And uh, what I'm going to say um, was discussed previously, but not all of us here uh, were, were there on when the, with the discussion took place. The peak tram has a long history, and uh, in terms of land ownership, uh, well, they, the operator owned the, uh, the land on both ends of the tramway, but the, the government owns what's in the middle. So the premium is for the lease of the land to operate uh, the, the business of uh, the peak tram. So it's a sort of a profit sharing arrangement. Ms. Chan uh, refers to an exact amount in the, ex in the ordinance. Uh, that, that was a transitional period. Uh, well, in the 1980s, it was decided that the premium would be collected uh, in one go for 10 years. And in a lump sum, uh, uh, and that's why it's in the ordinance. And then there was two. There were two more amendments later, and that is uh, the uh, executive council will grant the operating right on terms to be uh, decided by the executive council, and one of the terms uh, would be the amount of premium to be paid. And every time when the operating right is granted, we would get, uh, publish a set notice and we inform the legislative council. After this particular bill is passed, we can uh, we we would uh, reserve the same right, and then uh, that the terms will be uh, decided by the exec executive council. And one of the terms to be uh, cassetted uh, will be the premium pay. So you are saying that there's no change, C correct? And actually, we are looking into uh, the. Uh, way premiums should be paid. Uh, we used to have an annual pay, uh, pay premium payment, and then uh, in the past three exercises, uh, it was a lump sum for two years, uh, for 10 years rather. So we would uh, look into what uh, should be done the, after this bill is passed. And then uh, there are also references to other uh, <coughs> provisions in the Crosses in the build, for example, the the uh, development plan. For example, two C, uh, and uh, there, there's the three year period. So it's for ten years. So at the latest, uh, in the seventh <coughs> year, if there's a plan for uh, regrant or renewal, then you have to make make an application. Miss Jan asks if uh, the three years will be uh, sufficient. Well, well, if you want to have a uh, new tendering exercise, uh, you may need to make preparations. Well, at any time during the first seven years, it will, will be OK. Uh, it's in the uh, build, and uh, there are other procedural matters uh, set out in the bill. Uh, we are talking about, after all, a, a business. We don't want to make it too restrictive in terms of the uh, procedure and the arrangement. If the operator wants to continue with the uh, operation, they will have to submit an application in writing. 
And then uh, if they want to submit further information that they uh, think is appropriate, uh, well, they would uh, submit it. If the information is not sufficient, we would tell the operator. We do not stipulate what information would be required, but uh, we would actually uh, – so we would therefore like to be – put it in a more general manner, but that – will not affect the flexibility in the way we deal with with the uh, matter. Mr. Chen uh, raised the, <laughs> asked questions about the environment and the trees. Obviously, we would attach importance to that. When the peak term company, <clears throat> you know, uh, put forward proposals for improvement, uh, relevant departments will vet the proposals. We'll look at the environmental proposals and, and the proposal in respect of trees. Uh, we want to ensure that peak tram service will not be uh, interrupted in the event of a, <clears throat> uh, you know, change in the uh, operator, uh, and, and because the assets have not yet been transferred, service in is interrupted. Let's say if the government grants the operating right, but the assets could not be transferred, then the public would suffer, and the peak tram service would be interrupted. So the transfer of asset would take place in two forms: either mandatory acquisition which the company had indicated that they object to. The law allows the government or gives the power to the government to acquire such properties and assets. What we want to acquire would be the trams. But as far as the land and the buildings are concerned, we have to ask what exactly do we want. I mean, we want to ensure the service is not interrupted. So long as we can use the land and the buildings, the service can continue, and therefore there's no need for us to acquire the, the assets. So if we don't acquire the assets, the most effective solution is mandatory leasing. Mandatory leasing has nothing to do with private property. There is no question of encroachment of private properties, and we've already explained this point in several of our papers. Most importantly, we sh we should offer compensation according to market value, and if that's um, available, then there is no encroachment of private property. And I think the peak tram company also agrees to this arrangement. So there's no question of any violation of private properties. So if both parties have come to an agreement, that is, the government and the operator comes to a preliminary uh, a contractual agreement, then it, to ensure that all future – any party interested in operating the P-Train service in the future would know of this arrangement because it is put into the ordinance then then there's no question of any encroachment of private property. All right, members may now ask questions, and I may I suggest each member be given five minutes, <coughs> uh, inclusive of your question and response from the officials. You may also direct your question to any of the deputations. Mr. Wong Kok Hing. Thank you. Chairman. Regarding the question of operating right, I have a question for the government. Uh, the ordinance itself is not very complicated, and peak tram service has already has a very long history in Hong Kong. The service has been uh, provided in a very stable manner, but now it is transferred under the portfolio of the Economic Development and Commerce uh, Bureau. Now that we are proposing to amend the ordinance to uh, uh, give the, the grant the big tram company an operating right for 10 years, uh, uh, plus the, uh, uh, the uh, possibility of a 10-year extension. So 10 plus 10 years is a very long time. But given that in the past, Uh, the picture company has operated the service for a long time without, <clears throat> and there had not been any major hiccups, so I think we can accept that. But since we are now granting a 10 plus 10 year operating right, so while we are granting this long operating right, shouldn't the government also, you know, <clears throat> uh, provide for an interim review so that the public and let's go can? 
halfway through the operating period, uh, reveal how tra peak tram service can be further improved. Chairman, I mean, 10 years is a long time. And a lot of changes may, may take place within 10 years. If we now, uh, you know, provide for such a long operating period for the peak tram company, this may not be good for the company either. Uh, if we put a bit, a little bit of pressure on the company, then the peak tram company may be induced to improve its services and also an incentive for it to show the bigger commitment. So I wonder whether the government can also provide for an interim review. Thank you. Mr. Wong. I think you've asked a very valid question. 20 years appears to be a very long time. How did we arrive at the 20-year period? In the 1980s, we conducted a similar review. We also granted a 10 plus 10, plus 10 years operating period, and we've not encountered any major uh, problems. Uh, the public may uh, also be concerned that the uh, operating period may be too long, but the government is confident that the service standard could be maintained. Uh, this is because uh, it has something to do with our exit mechanism. The exit mechanism provides that in some circumstances, the company may need to exit. That is, we may actually terminate their operating right. One such uh, scenario could be that there are safety issues with the company. Of course, we, uh, we attach a lot of importance to safety. And also, we would lay down conditions when we grant the operating right. And if the peak trend company cannot uh, comply with those conditions, then we can actually trigger the exit mechanism. In negotiating the terms of the franchise, we would talk to the company about the performance pledge. We would ensure that they would need to satisfy certain uh, you know, indicators or parameters. And if they fail to comply, then we would have remedies in place and find out whether there are factors which are beyond the control of the company. Uh, we would also look at whether the company could come up with appropriate remedies. If they fail, then uh, we would have grounds to report to EXCO and EXCO, EXCO will make a decision. So the mechanism is such that after we have granted the operating right, we will simply, you know, <clears throat> you know, uh, <clears throat> wash our hands of the whole matter. Of course, the council. I think it's appropriate that the government should provide, you know, uh, information regarding the performance of the Petra and Company uh, uh, from time to time. I think it is only reasonable that government report to LegCo about the performance of the company. I, of course, uh, welcome the government providing us with the relevant information. I, what I'm saying is that prior to the expiry of the 10-year grant franchise period, of course, the company will apply for another extension for extension for another 10 years. What I'm proposing is that after 10 years, there should be a review. Naturally, pursuant to the ordinance, we will allow the company to continue to operate the service. But we would want to look at how the company has performed after 10 years. I think the law allows the company to give us an indication during the first seven years, so they don't have to wait until you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, almost ten years uh, into the operating period. The question is, when they apply for an extension, then the, we would want to look at its performance, and the government will also let the public know about how the company had performed. During, uh, and so we may not only need to disclose the information uh, immediately before the 10 years has lapsed. Mr. Yik Chi Ming, in CB 4128-1450-02, in the second paragraph, the government is saying that so long as the future lessee 
is willing to pay the market rent, then it would already satisfy uh, Article 105 of the Basic Law, which is in respect of the protection of private properties. I think the government is looking at this issue from too narrow a perspective. Let's say if I have a property, it doesn't mean that if you're willing to pay me the market rent, I must lease it to you. There is no such a rule, no such rule in in the market. So, protection of private property, my <coughs> to my understanding, is that no one can, uh, you know, impose any restrictions on my on on my rights over the land. So right now you have encroached that right. But the big trend company is saying that, according to the previous, uh, you know. Uh, the provisions in the ordinance and also according to the uh, bus service ordinance and the ferry uh, <coughs> uh, service uh, ordinance uh, in scenarios where you may need to take back the op operating right and to ensure the service is not interrupted the government has the power to uh, to uh, acquire or take over such property in order the service may continue. The picturing company is saying that if they if you take acquire their assets they're different from the bus company. A bus company, they may have a piece of land, and there's no commercial activities on top. But for the peak tram company, there are a lot of commercial activities on top of the peak tram terminus. So they don't want you to take over the property. Then they would therefore say that they are prepared to accept mandatory leasing so long as you, they are offered market rent. But I think still you are, you are, you are, you are, you are encroaching on private property here. Uh, last time, Mr. Paul Chair uh, suggested that we could do something, you know, by way of the lease. But you were saying that there is no way for you to compel the third party to accept the terms of the lease. That's not true. You could impose a condition in the franchise. If I operate a ferry service, you can say I have to pay, uh, you know, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 million dollars for the leasing of of the pier and so, and I have to accept. So in the franchise, you can stipulate that the new operator must pay market rate to the landowner and, and make it one of the conditions. And then you can do something in the lease uh, to deal with that. Of course, the peak train company is being very good because I must commend them for the excellent service they have provided over the years. And I think what they want to do is to simply resolve this matter and get on with their business as usual. But I think uh, your understanding of uh, the protection of private property is actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, based on a very, uh, a very narrow perspective. Well, the basic law offers a solemn uh, protection to private property. During the last two meetings, I think we've spent a lot of time discussing this point. Is it the case that we can? There's no other option except by way of legislation. In our paper this time, in paragraph three of our paper, paragraph three, four, and five, we have actually analysed in detail uh, the the issue. I think the crux of the matter is that even as Mr. Yick suggested, if we were to uh, you know, bind the new uh, operator by way of a uh, uh, contract. Of course, the new entrant may not choose not to enter the, the market. And because of such disputes, nobody may be willing to operate the trick peak tram service. And this will be contrary to the original intention for of the exit mechanism. The government is now proposing, is now reviewing the ordinance and is proposing fundamental amendments to the ordinance, which has been in place for more than 100 years. This is because without an exit mechanism, everything will be unclear, and every time we have to rely on luck. We are lucky to have a good operator who is willing to follow the basic law and pay out the compensation. A lot depends on luck. If the government relies on luck to amend the ordinance, that may not be appropriate. So we hope to put it clearly in the law, the circumstances under which what we, we would need to do what to ensure that the Patreon service uh, can continue. I don't agree with the uh, with the uh, permit secretary. I'd like to queue up again, Mr. U.C. Wing. 
Victoria Peak is a very important uh, icon for Hong Kong and the operation of the Peak Tram service is one of the you know icons of the tourism industry so to maintain the it is important that we maintain the ambience of uh, of the peak and I agree with Mr. Chen that we must protect the Victoria Peak and its resources as well as the environment On the question of mandatory leasing, I think uh, uh, Mr. Chen is worried about the question of private property being uh, violated. If Mr. Chen is worried that without mandatory leasing, is there any other way by which we can achieve, achieve our objective? That is, to ensure that peak tram service will not be interrupted and protect private property. At the same time, mandatory leasing is one of the viable proposals by the government. Another proposal is that if the peak tram company has made a mistake in terms of safety or compliance with the contract uh, agreements, then uh, we have to go for mandatory leasing, but no thir third party is willing to come forward to, to take over. There would the government, is there a mechanism for the government to step in and, 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 and provide the service? I think that is the, 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 out, the, 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 I think the government also has a role to play here because the peak tram is a very important, uh, icon for Hong Kong. It's not an ordinary investment that we're now talking about. So has the government considered that option? Thank you. I think we see, you asked a very good question. Uh, since the government has amended the ordinance uh, to ensure the service will not be interrupted, if in case we cannot find a suitable operator, then the exit mechanism will be uh, implemented in this manner. That is, Exco can, you know, lease the uh, the asset, uh, you know, to any party. Uh, the government may take over temporarily the assets or designate a particular department or organization to run the service. Well, that would be allowed. That could be done. Chairman, I wonder whether you could spell this out clearly in the law. The operator is running the peak tram service as a business. The government... Well, I think you're not being very clear. I think... If somebody is op operating has operated service some time, and then and then he can you know surrender it to the new 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 player, but but then you have to operate the 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 the, the terms clearly. If I think it's problematic if you simplify the issue like that. Uh, in the ordinance, could you also pro stipulate what are the conditions for the government to step in and the conditions under which the, ex the incumbent will have to hand over the, the assets and so on? Yeah, your point is taken. When we uh, decide on these terms, we've made reference of some of the existing ordinance and we, we are satisfied that this can be done. Uh, the most important point is that we have to ensure the service they continue and so when, when how long would the government should the government take over the, 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 the service I think I mean for any new entrant to the market the duration for, of the government taking over is an important consideration so there will be a clear signal to the market that the government may take over the service for a year during that year the government can proceed to organize for tender uh, and so on so there's no question of, of confusion of confusion over the issue. You said that there are some other examples. Could you give us some such examples? Well, in our letter dated June twenty second, in Annex two of that letter, we have provided for several examples. Uh, for example, the bus com uh, we have a similar arrangement with the bus companies. We can take over and then uh, uh, you know, award the franchise to another company. Same for the MPRC, actually. Same for ferries. Oh. 
I just like to remind you all that when we had a meeting last time, a lot of questions were raised, and in our house committee meeting, we'll discuss them further, and the administration would reply to those questions then. So I like uh, members today to concentrate your questions on the um, issues um, you know are relevant and for questions raised last time we can follow them up later on and uh, we still have time for further discussions so next one is Chair Wei Chen thank you chairman I agree with uh, Mr. Chen and Yik Chi Ming on the point of mandatory leasing You know, for the, I think that's something unjust and unreasonable for a property owner concerned. Even though the administration has said on various occasions that there are other similar arrangements like that for uh, bus services and ferry services, but that refers to indeed uh, temporary taking over and uh, compensation in the form of um, market rentals. I know Peak Tramways has no major objection to the arrangement, but they may not have any choice anyway. But as a surveyor myself, even though you talk about market rentals, but that doesn't reflect or mean that you have to uh, lease it to that designated party and for the landlord and the uh, tenants uh, you know there are things that must be leased out so that would have an impact on the uh, management so you can't you know all these cannot be reflected in the assessed rentals because you, you, there's, there's this element of uh, mandatory leasing Say the uh, tenants and the uh, landlord in the agreements signed. If the landlord violate rental agreements or relevant rental laws, then th you still have not much choice. So often is talking. We're talking about some sort of uh, potential rights deprivation here. You can say that Hong Kong for the public interest. We can um, enforce um, confiscation of some properties. In the past, we've seen many cases, of course. But if you want to have uh, mandatory leasing, including uh, necessary premises, then would that have an impact on the other properties left behind? So if I were to acquire 10,000 square feet of land, and you need and uh, use, using 90, 9,900 square feet and the remaining 10 feet still need to be compensated all for. So P Tramways has the right to ask the government to actually acquire these properties. That could be a better option because as uh, you know, land or property owners, they should be treated the same. If you require mandatory leasing. Well, sorry, Chairman. I may not have time to sit through this meeting, the whole meeting today, because there are so many meetings today. But we need to uh, make a distinction here. There is some kind of, you know, there's this uh, option of uh, temporary taking over, you know, within a specified period. So from the perspective of justice, I would object to the government Including this power to um, ask Peak Tramway to, um, you know, be forced to lease some properties to other people. Even though I know Peak Tramways have not raised any objection, but you know they may be just bowing to reality. So the administration seems to just impose, you know, have imposed this decision on the operator, Andy. I know this is uh, a topic that all of you are concerned about. I understand your uh, what you're saying. 
you know, for general discussion, leasing matters, the landlord, of course, should have the choice, and the tenant should be someone that can decide or choose. So this is the current case is a bit different from normal tenancy matters, but it's due to a practical issue here. We've discussed this several times. Apart from monetary sale and lease. There isn't a third option right now, and for monetary sale, you've heard me, um, you know, say this several times. The, con the government's considerations, first of all, because the government doesn't want to um, buy anything, and if you want to buy anything, um, you require a large number of a large amount of money, and uh, would that actually decrease the incentives for people bidding? And thirdly, a practical issue is the government is very concerned about the feelings of uh, rights owners, and the rights owners have told you that they object to sell. So with that issues around, so there are not that many choices available. Either you have the ex arrangement through a monetary lease, or without the monetary, uh, or without the exit arrangement. Without that arrangement, that means you will have to deal with the same company over and over again. Or when the company does not want to do it, or negotiation fail, then the service will be ended. So those are the options we have. So we do face a practical issue here, problem. The existing legislations, there are some arrangements for a monetary lease, so we don't think that any precedents would help us. But in our past meetings, we've, uh, after the past meetings, we've done some research. And we talk about, you know, temporary taking over uh, within a specified period, and then uh, the period can be ex further extended without any limit. But it would, you can look at it this way. We're talking about uh, taking over of uh, 10 years, so the right owners will rent it, will rent it for 10 years. There's no, well, we, there's a basis. We'll lose money, but there's a basis for working out the race. Because once you've uh, the land for uh, operations on the peak and how much profits that could be in and uh, what are the costs involved, you can still work out the sum in, in determining the rental. Like, for example, the pick mall. Well, it's an interactive situation, even though tram itself is a tourist facility, but at the same time, it does bring passengers up to the peak for shopping and sightseeing. And the commercial activities there, to a large part, actually um, de are dependent on tram passengers. So, is that if we. The loss of the a piece of land would affect the business at the shopping malls, or the contrary, if the peak tram, the land there, um, the platform site, because the peak tramways has lost its operating rate, and the land, or if the government insists does not insist on tram services, um, as a prerequisite for changing the land use, then the number of passengers may drop. If you want to look at it from the rental perspective, you can look at it from both ways. So we can see that the government's intention is that um, we hope, as Mr. Yu said, the tram as an, such an important tourist facility can continue to be operated. We, and we hope to see that there would not be any termination of service, even the service change hands. That's why we have this uh, mandatory lease arrangement to um, take into account the needs of various parties. Maybe, first of all, I feel that Peak Tramway is an icon. It's the place that uh, many tourists to Hong Kong must go. And the operator, well, has a long operating record, and its performance has been acceptable to the public. And in the past, we haven't seen any problems because the operator um, actually is also the person who owns the properties. Under the current amendment bill, the government has considered other factors that um, the future property owner and operator, if they were not the same person, what should be the arrangement? 
I think that the operator is also, you know, running or providing other services in Hong Kong. And tram is but one of its many um, kinds of services in Hong Kong of the companies. I don't think that the company would depart from its current operational mode. But well, legislation is one thing; it's another thing. Confidence is an one thing. To the existing operator, um, we're talking about a piece of private property belonging to the operator. In the past, we talk about we are only talking about the one or second stories of land or space. If the uh, lower portion will be given to the new operator. Then, of course, it will be given to a new operator if the existing operator gives up on it. And the existing operator can still continue to run other uh, facilities. For um, the issue of private properties, now you say that you can take it over if you want. Would that affect the current landlord? Seems or would it seem unjust? Andy just mentioned, or other members mentioned, the tram company on the new bill has not made much noises or expressed strong views. Well, I'd just like to ask the big tramway on the operating part and property ownership part if we are to make the uh, amendment. Would you accept it? This is not just a question about you, indeed, because in the future, if there are to be a new operator, uh, you know, they can have their own views. So I'd like to listen to the uh, peak tramways company's view. Mr. Sawyer? I've got a green light, thank you. Um, as, as I said um, in my presentation, um, we, uh, as the Peak Tramways, um, object to any exit arrangement that requires us to um, have our property taken over and, and, and bought um, uh, compulsorily. Um, whereas we do uh, uh, agree that uh, mandatory lease structure uh, is certainly much more palatable than a forced sale. Um, and we understand that if another operator takes over the operation of the peak tram, this, the mandatory sale of essential equipment such as the tram and the tracks um, would be a natural process from that point. Um, so we, 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 we do believe that the, essential, the, the mandatory leasing process um, will ensure that we can continue the operation of the tram, which we feel is the, the most important thing um, we want to, in the public interest to keep that going. Um, in terms of the issue of the land grants for um, St. John's Building, uh, the lower terminus and the Peak Tower being the upper terminus, uh, it's our belief that it would be very difficult to put something into a land grant and a surrender and regrant process. Um, it would take a significant amount of time, way beyond um, the current operating right. Um, and again, we believe to ensure the tram continues um, uh, every day that the best option is, is what is currently proposed. Andy, I'd also like to ask you, uh, private rights, I've heard a lot of views saying that if the administration, you know, make changes to operating rights and to investors, that will have an impact. And now we have this mechanism that if the peak tramways um, finishes or decides not to carry on with the business, then you have to invite public tender, and the new operator will be able to use the existing terminus. And if no agreement is reached, there's another mechanism that is to go for adjudication, arbitration. But of course, everyone will be obliged to follow the results of arbitration. So if that's the case, then do you still need the uh, provision about um, taking over of properties? So. Because uh, you might provide a place for the new operator, 
uh, without involving the land rights. Yeah, for a new operator, and he has to make a new decision. I think the most practical solution is for the new operator to ask themselves whether he can use the the land uh, on the peak and at the terminus, and also use the properties concerned. Even though we have a an exit mechanism, uh, and empowering the government to uh, have mandatory sell, but before we use that power, we use that power. We allow the operate the market to operate. That is, uh, the new operator can have negotiations with us and asking for us to sell the land to or asking the previous operator to sell the land to them. So there could be negotiations still. And also, should there are any problems with the negotiations, then there are some rules of the game um, prescribed by the amendment. And both parties can go for arbitration or arbitration. If there's no provision on arbitration, then if the big trap company said, I won't sell it or lease it to you, I just, we just want you to play a part at all, then the other party would uh, have no way out. It cannot even go for uh, arbitration. So why would we want to have this amendment there? Because according to the law, for the continuation of peak services, uh, you know, and the company agrees that the continuation of services is so important to Hong Kong. So the company agrees to uh, agrees on renting the facilities to you. So there's no, there won't be any question of uh, infringement of any person's interest. But talking about precedents, you're concerned about whether we are setting a precedent. That may be what you're afraid of. But that is something that would not happen because every time there was a, there's a need for uh, new legislation, and the government will need to explain why there's a need for a new legislation, and if. The government, you, you think that in future the current amendment bill will be the basis for future similar legislations? I think you can rest assured because this would not constitute any con um, basis. If the um, bills committee passed the amendment bill, it's not because we want to set a precedent, but because we think we do have enough grounds here for the amendments. So, if in the future the government presents a similar bill. Uh, for your in approval, uh, the government can only say that uh, this is the reference. Uh, we did this a few, uh, a number of years ago. But uh, well, if we do this now, if we look at other pieces of legislation for other operators now, you will know that uh, they are not really a good reference for us. So this bill is not going to become uh, a precedent. We just want to set out clear crosses in the bill so that in the future uh, it's clear to all parties and then we don't have to start it all over again every time uh, the right is renewed. All right, we'll continue with our discussion uh, with regard to the deputations, uh, submissions, uh, members, you have the floor. Mr. or Dr. Kenneth Chan. Well, we are uh, saying that this may become a precedent. The government says it's not going to be a precedent. Well, it's not really up to you to say whether it is or not. This time, the government and the operator has come uh, to this agreement. Uh, now it is presented in the form of a bill, and we need to scrutinize the bill. In the future, uh, the government may do the same. Uh, then uh, you, the government may agree with something with another operator, and then uh, the agreement will be uh, presented as a bill. So that may well be a precedent. Although you think that, uh, that this is not going to become a precedent, but it can be repeated. Well, I'm not uh, targeting any particular transport operator, not uh, in the peak tramway company or other operators. I'm just saying that we are not. We should not be doing anything that would uh, cause any constitutional problems in the future. Uh, well, 
the government is of the view that it's uh, only in the business of uh, assessment uh, whether a, an operator is uh, sound and so on and so forth. You're not concerned with uh, the uh, the right uh, price of uh, anything. Now this is a proposal uh, because the operator and the government uh, have agreed to do this. You want to uh, delete uh, the existing section 11. Under section 11, the government has an important role. It can actually buy the entire company. And you also this can decide what to buy and what not to buy. So as some members have pointed out, the government can actually take over the company under existing uh, section 11. Now it's going to be deleted and you are going to have the compulsory sell or lease arrangement subject to arbitration. This is a major change. This is not a minor change. So I just want to set out my views uh, so that uh, I can uh, now put some questions. Uh, a question for Ms. Tanya Chan. Is he going to become a president? Do you want to rem <coughs> uh, give us any further reminders in our discussion with the government? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Chan. Well, actually, I listened very carefully to the government's uh, elaboration of the proposed arrangement. I, ca I can't really see Ms. Chan's uh, full name. It's a long way off. Uh, 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 Ms. Chen refers to this as a one-off arrangement. But uh, as a matter of uh, legislation, we don't want to have one-off arrangement with one particular company. It said that the existing ordinance is a one-off thing, and you don't want to have something uh, specifically for one company, for the tra peak tram Chenwei Company, but well, you you are doing exactly that because uh, there's no telling whether the, another operator in the future will accept the same arrangement. The existing operator can uh, buy or sell or can lease uh, their equipment. Well, under Section 16, they can sell their business. They can lease some their. Uh, equipment and also they can take our mortgage. Under the new bill, there are certain uh, uncertainties. So that's why I'm saying that the exit uh, mechanism is not for the existing operator. Under Section 11, uh, under Section 9, Section 11, under certain circumstances, uh, the government can take over by, issue, by, the, by way of an order. You can uh, continue with the operation as an interim measure. Uh, there may be some uh, uh, disruption that would be unavoidable. How can you say that the proposed change amendments are not major changes? Uh, there's a change to the road of uh, the government. Well, the, you said uh, the government could well be uh, a lessee, but uh, that, that's, that's not just one possibility. Uh, uh, we'd like the uh, government to uh, further elaborate on uh, the justifications. Uh, Mr. Chan, Mr. Andy Chan. Uh, the factors uh, underpinning the uh, compulsory sell and lease uh, arrangement uh, are, are that uh, we want the market mechanism to be of the paramount importance, and also we will consider certain factors, three factors. Well, if you, we don't need to buy anything and we can make do, then that will be the extent. That is to say, we go for the uh, um, minimal approach when it comes to the exercise of powers vested in the government. And also in Hong Kong, well, land purchase is going to be expensive. To the new operator, it's uh, an additional cost. We don't want to put up an unnecessary entrance, uh, entry, uh, entry obstacle.
And also, we have to consider the views of the existing operator. We have to uh, take into that into account. But that doesn't mean that uh, their uh, views dictate what we do. And uh, there's a point about whether we are introducing major changes. Well, there's, there was the exit mechanism in the 1980s. Uh, it's, uh, it was renewed every seven years. If the, the renewal was uh, denied, then that's the exit mechanism. So it's, it was there in the uh, 1980s. And then uh, in subsequent uh, ordinance, uh, it was somehow uh, omitted. So uh, there was the exit mechanism for 100 years from the start of the uh, tramway service to 1980s. And now we are sort of uh, getting back this arrangement. It's not uh, something unprecedented in public uh, utilities uh, and related uh, agreements and uh, laws. There's, there, it's not uncommon because we don't do, do want don't want to see uh, the rust disruption to essential uh, services or facilities. Uh, let me ask one further question of the deputations uh, to see if you would like to supplement anything here. Two members of the bills committee would like to ask questions for the second round. Uh, this particular section would uh, take us up to 10 a.m. So at this point, I want to ask if the deputations, uh, if they want to supplement anything. If not, uh, then I'll give uh, members for the second round three minutes. Mr. Wong Kok Heng, Chairman, I have a question for the peak tramway company. I would like to invite the company to respond to my concerns. And my concerns that in the future you may get a 20-year uh, franchise or or period of operating right. Today you are you have a good opportunity here in this council that uh, you will be coming to this council to account, uh, give an account of your business and your business plan to the public and to this council so as to uh, boost public confidence in you. Uh, so apart from the two the stations, uh, uh, at the peak and uh, the two termini, um, apart from two termini on both ends, uh, Garden Road at uh, the peak. What about the uh, stations in the middle? Are you going to provide good maintenance? Uh, because uh, they are good, they are important public facilities, although uh, I would say not many tourists use them. Mr. Sawyer. Thank you very much for your question. Um, in terms of the um, uh, intermediate stations, uh, we actually very recently renovated all of those stations um, and put in new uh, weather protection and also um, some history of the different stops. So we thought it was important that people can understand why they've been named in the, uh, in the particular way they have. So we've identified some history as well. Um, and of course, we'll continue to maintain those intermediate stations uh, to the standard that we always have done. Um, you're right; they haven't been used; they're not used a lot of the time. But nonetheless, we do maintain them um, the best we possibly can, and, and we haven't received any uh, concerns or complaints from the public for, for the maintenance of those. Uh, in terms of uh, our overall plan, um, we're, we're very keen and very excited to to, if we get the extension of the operating right, to implement a complete renovation plan for the peak tram. Um, we, we completely appreciate um, that the queues are growing every year um, and that the time taken to get on the tram takes a little longer. Um, so we want to alleviate that and we have submitted to government some initial plans that uh, explain quite clearly what we're trying to achieve. Um, we are limited um, by, by space. We can't make a double-decker tram. We can't make it any wider. We can only make it longer. Um, but we have proposed to increase it to 200 seats from the current 120. Um, we've proposed to move the stations, uh, one of the stations, uh, further up uh, the hill from Garden Road. So it allows the current station to be completely for queuing 
um, and in air conditioned um, situation and we'll be able to entertain and look after our passengers as much better. Um, so we think that the, pre the pre presentation we've got is very exciting and will clearly alleviate the queue issues and, uh, and make um, the peak tram continue for a very long time. However, it is a significant investment. Um, hence, uh, my earlier presentation, I explained that we would immediately apply for a 10-year operating right if, if the bill goes through, um, and then we'll present to government our plans and then apply straight away for the second 10-year right, so as we can implement the investment scheme as quickly as we possibly can, and we'd like to have it finished within the next four to five years so as uh, we ensure that we have a, a, a brand spanking new tram ready for our passengers. Thank you. Chairman, well, Peak Tramway is an icon, the light uh, the tram uh, for Hong Kong. We would like uh, to see uh, sustained improvement uh, of the service for local people and tourists alike. I think Mr. Wong Kok Heng has put a very good question about the intermediary uh, stations. Uh, it's not just about renovation. Uh, actually, the trails and the paths uh, should also be looked after. I hope the tramway company can uh, do more. You know, it's very humid at mid-levels, and you need to uh, do more uh, to make sure that the railings and uh, the equipment there uh, are well uh, maintained. Uh, Mr. Yik Chi Ming, Mr. Frankie Yik, according to the Deputy Secretary, uh, if it's uh, regulated by franchise, then you have to, to do it time and again. What's the problem? I have done this. Uh, every time when there's a, uh, the time for franchise renewal, I, have to, I had to discuss and negotiate with the government. So it's not a real problem. And I also agree with the poor chair. Why don't you do the surrender and regrant? Well, you may want to avoid the compensation issue, in my view. Well, the land is all right. Now you want to impose additional conditions affecting or lowering the value. And the uh, big tramway companies may say, OK, I accept it. But what about compensation? If you put in a compensation cross, that's OK. And then you have to look at the market value when you want to enter. And if one day the big way, big tramway company uh, doesn't want to do it, and uh, no one is willing to pay the, the uh, rent required, then then the the big tramway would uh, disappear unless it's taken over by the government. And now you are saying that uh, uh, the big tramway company uh, has accepted the deal. Well, well, I'm just concerned that this may become a precedent. I, uh, I, that, that's going to be a problem. Mr. Chan, uh, we've heard this and I uh, have responded to the uh, opinion. I don't want to repeat myself. Once again, uh, yes, yes. I, I want to do some catching up. Uh, I'm not uh, really in a good shape uh, lately. May, maybe, uh, Chairman, if you, if I may, I would like to ask a question of uh, the representative uh, from the Peak Tramway Company. Well, from your perspective, would you agree or consider doing something about the land lease? to achieve the purpose as suggested by the government instead of having a new bill. Well, did you consider this option? Uh, th th that's the second question. Mr. Sawyer. Thank you for your question. Um, uh, as I, s I said earlier, um, we have looked at the, the situation of the uh, surrender and regrant, the, the land grant of the two uh, uh, properties. Um, and we feel, firstly, that it would be, there would be a considerable amount of time, probably years, before we could come to a solution um, on an acceptable solution to both us and, uh, and the government on the conditions of that surrender and regrant. Um, clearly, there would have to be discussions. If, if there was premium involved, there would, would have to be discussions about compensation. 
Um, so we, we, we feel that it, uh, it's also difficult to bind a third party in terms of, uh, of, of, of uh, the future leasing of a property um, if it, with a surrender and regrant. It's only between ourselves and the government. So we see, we see that argument as difficult, but particularly we see the time issue. Um, again, our focus is to keep the tram operating um, so it runs every day without, uh, without hiccup um, and be given the opportunity to implement our investment plan um, to completely renew the operation of the tram for, for all of our passengers. Thank you. Uh, what about the, first, the second question as to whether there have been discussions over the issue? <laughs> 可以跟政府傾重新批地這件事,就不用立法這個方這個途徑。我們有評估過這個問題,覺得是不是很實際的做法來的。May have been some internal discussion or consideration. What I, the question really meant is whether there have been discussions between yourself and the government regarding this issue. When this was raised, this was something that we, we uh, did discuss um, with government. We haven't uh, discussed it in detail, but uh, when it was raised, um, we looked at the situation and felt that it would not be practical for a surrender and regrant, and we gave that opinion to government. Very well, thank you. Okay. Um, um, I'd like to thank the deputations for coming uh, <coughs> uh, uh, here today to give us the views. We've heard the views of the individuals and the deputations. I hope the government can take those views back, give them full consideration. So thank you very much. You may now leave. I propose that uh, since we are scheduled to uh, <coughs> uh, go on until 12.45, so I, uh, may I propose now that we uh, take a break? I think we can take a five-minute break now. <laughs>